years. Sunny, cold, frosty day here. I wanted to talk to you about something today that I think about more and more as I get older. And it's, uh, it's basically, you know, sums it up. Is the juice worth the squeeze? Uh, and uh, the saying's been around for a long time, and it's basically, you know, does is the end result worth the effort that you put in, or is the end product that you that you got worth the amount of money that you purchased it for? life, I mean, that's all over the place, you know, the, uh, you know, does that person, person that you, you really want and you're chasing and you want a relationship, is it really worth it? Like, you know, are they worth it? You know, I, I try to tell my kids, you know, something that I, I found to be very important in life is, hey, do not date someone that you wouldn't marry. Don't date them. And certainly, don't have sex with someone that you wouldn't marry. Because babies have it. <laughs> you know, and I think that's a, a good, good rule to live by as far as relationships go. You know, because, you know, is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, is that person worth all of that effort you know would you want to spend the rest of your life you know with somebody you know who's a lot of fun you know in the moment when they're you know partying or whatever but they can't hold down a job you know they you know is that somebody you want to spend the rest of you do you want to tie yourself to that person So there's that, and then there's, you know, other things in life. What I want to focus on today, I guess, and try to, to pinpoint this and, and help, uh, help people out a little bit, is talk about something that I, I know a little bit more about. You know, being in the industry that I'm in, I'm in the motorsports industry. I sell motorcycles, ATVs, side by sides, boats, fun stuff. You know, you got the is the juice worth the squeeze? You know, I love what I sell. I really cannot see myself without a motorcycle, and that's what got me into this industry. You know, I just love love motorcycles, I love riding them, you know, I love the thrill of it, and to me, it's, the juice is worth the squeeze, it's, it's the risk factor, you know, of getting in an accident, and, and dying, or being paralyzed, or being permanently injured, is it worth it? Well, to me, it is, you know, for you, it might not be, you know, but for me, it is, it's part of my life, I can't, I cannot imagine not having a motorcycle in my life. You know, for you, that could be completely different. You, know, you might see a motorcycle and be like, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. What can you do with it? You can't haul anything on it. You can't, you know, take the family out to dinner on it. You know, it's a totally selfish thing. And it could be a selfish thing, you know, but for me, it's therapy helps me to clear my mind, helps me to think, come up with ideas. So, you know, that's, that's part of it. Now, when you go to purchase, you know, an item like that, if you buy it from a dealership, you know, you you got to do the paperwork part. And every time you do the paperwork part, you've got a business manager or a finance manager 
whatever they want to call that person that's going to do the paperwork with you. If you got a loan or however you're going to pay for it, you've got a person that's going to be there with you to take your money and to do all the paperwork. Well, there's a bunch of products that they're going to try to try to upsell you, you know, to, to enhance their bottom line. And some of them might be good for you and some of them might be bad. First one I'll cover real quick, and, and I'm a believer in it, is gap insurance. If you don't put, you know, more than 40% to 50% down on your purchase, whether it's a, a motorcycle, car, ATV, side by side, whatever, boat, you really should seriously consider getting gap insurance. Because if something happens to that vehicle, it gets stolen or deemed a total loss by your insurance company, that doesn't mean that they're required to pay you what you owe on it. It just means that they're required to, to pay what it was worth when you lost it or when it was destroyed or whatever. Then you're on the hook for the rest. So if you put zero down, on a purchase and you buy a bunch of back-end product and, and everything else so you're let's say you buy a ten thousand dollar motorcycle and you bought a warranty and a service plan and tire and wheel protection and all this other stuff now you're you're into that ten thousand dollar motorcycle oh, and you financed in your taxes you know you're into that motorcycle for Fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars now, and the retail price of that bike was ten thousand dollars. So now you're into it for four or five thousand dollars more than what you paid. What what the value of the bike was at that moment. Now everybody knows as soon as you buy a, a new vehicle and you take it off a lot, well it depreciates a certain amount right away just because you bought it. Okay, so now that $10,000 vehicle is worth maybe $8,000. Okay, well, you pay $10,000 for, for the vehicle and another $4,000 for the, uh, the back end product. Now you're into that loan $6,000 upside down. So God forbid somebody steals it from you the next day. Well, your insurance company, yeah, absolutely, they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna pay eight thousand dollars. Well, you've got a, a fourteen thousand dollar loan on that that vehicle. Who do you think's responsible for that six thousand hmm, dollars? You are. So. The insurance company pays the eight. You got to come up with the six, and you don't even have your your vehicle anymore. That's tough. You know. So if you if you were gonna buy a vehicle and you don't have money to put down a significant down payment, get gap insurance. It's pretty cheap. It's really cheap, and it pays off. I've seen so many people affected by that situation that I've become a firm believer in it. You know? All right, the next thing, and the big one, is uh, extended warranty. Now, if you're buying a new vehicle, generally a new vehicle will come with a warranty of some sort. You know, uh, it might be two years, might be one year, might be three years, whatever it is. So you've got that warranty. You've got the manufacturer's warranty. And this was a new vehicle. So you've got a manufacturer's warranty. They'll still offer you an extended warranty. And generally, you know, they'll sell it to you as, a, as you know, a four or five year warranty. The first question you need to ask, does that warranty 
start when the manufacturer's warranty ends or does it start at the time of purchase? So think of it this way. If you buy a four year extended warranty from me and you your vehicle has a two year manufacturer's warranty, 90% of the time, that four year warranty starts when you purchase the, the vehicle. So are you getting four years for your money? Or are you just getting an extra two? Most of the time you're just getting an extra two because it runs at the same time as your manufacturer's warranty. So you're, you're in a sense paying four years for two years of extra warranty. So know that. Ask that question. Get it in writing. Make sure you read that part of your contract. Make sure you know exactly what you're getting. Now, on used vehicles that are older than five years, I'm definitely a, a supporter of a, an extended warranty or purchasing a warranty at the time of purchase, not from the guy that calls you on the phone. <laughs> it is definitely something to consider. On, you know, different vehicles, it, it, it matters differently. You know, like a lot of times on a low mileage, like let's say a Honda, you buy a low mileage Honda Goldwing, you're probably not gonna have any problems for the first, uh, thousand miles on, on one of those bikes so if it's got if it's a high mileage Honda I would get a on a Goldwing I'd get an extended warranty you know anything probably over 60,000 miles on a on a Shadow probably anything over 10,000 miles on a Harley Davidson I would probably go anything over 20,000 miles I'd get an extended warranty on it and I would use it don't be afraid to use it. That's what it's there for. You need to ask where you can use it, when you can use it. Is there a deductible? Most of the times on these warranties, there's some sort of deductible. Sometimes it's you know 50 bucks. Sometimes it's a hundred dollars. I know with the the Harley warranty, they've got a good warranty program if you use it. Um, sometimes. A lot of times their warranty will cover towing up to a certain amount so if you live within you know 50 miles from your dealership you know that tow to have your bike repaired that should be covered under warranty the tow should be covered as well but I believe the Harley warranty there's a $50 deductible so know that you got a $50 deductible there that you're gonna be responsible to pay and that $50 deductible is a lot less than you're gonna pay for the repair bill. Because on most shops, you're over $100 an hour just on labor. So the first hour of labor, you know, that $50 only would take care of a half an hour of labor. So know that. Uh, so know your, know or not it is worth what you're paying you know for that warranty know when that warranty starts know when it ends know exactly what it covers most warranties aren't going to cover your brake pads your tires uh, you know a lot of the simple wearable things things that wear out belts stuff like that not not going to be covered under warranty know that um, then you've got tire and wheel protection. I've seen this go both ways. Sometimes, you know, if you work construction and you plan on riding your motorcycle or driving your new car to the job site, get tire and wheel protection. It'll save you money just in picking up nails and screws in your tires. I've seen that. But generally, you know, that's one of those things. I don't know if it's worth it or not. If you do, if you put a lot of miles on your vehicle, it's probably worth it too, you know. 
because a lot of these new, like whether it's the warranty or the tire wheel programs, it'll be for a certain amount of years, but they don't limit you miles. And that's that's good. If, if you're going to use that vehicle for a ton of miles, yeah, that's worth it. You know, if, you, if you're only using it for, you know, a thousand miles a year or a couple thousand miles a year, it might not be worth it. That leads me into service plans. So a lot of dealerships nowadays will offer you a service plan. And they'll offer you to pay an uptime, oh, uh, uptime, a one-time upfront charge. They'll give you, they package it as, you know, so many years worth of services. Like it might be a three-year service plan. So the first three years, they claim that your, all your services are covered. Well, know that there are limitations to all of them. Like it might only cover so many oil changes and so many major services. Generally, it doesn't cover all your services if you're, let's say you're an iron butt guy on a motorcycle where you put on thousands and thousands of miles a year. Like it's it's not uncommon to have guys that ride motorcycles put, you know, 20, 30,000, sometimes 40 and 50,000 miles on their bikes a year. Well, that plan only covers so many oil changes and so many major services. Let's say on a Harley Davidson, you know, you've got a service that Harley recommends every 5,000 miles. You know, if you put on 30,000 miles in a year, shoot, that's six different services there. And there's Six different services, six different oil changes, you know, that, that adds up. You know, so if it's limited, you need to know. If it's not limited, if it's unlimited, you need to know that too. And read that fine print, get it. Know exactly what you're signing for. Because it can make a huge difference. You know, if uh, generally those service plans, you know, I'm a fan if it's something that you use a lot. Like, you know, I put a lot of miles on my bike. I don't, can't tell right now because I'm driving a bunch, but <laughs> I put a lot of miles on my bike. I put, you know, probably between 15 and 20,000 miles a year on a motorcycle. So if somebody offers me one of those service plans, I, I generally think pretty hard about it because it might be worth it. You know, you've got to know what the, what services cost for your vehicle. Oil changes on bikes are not as cheap as they are on cars. A car, you can go to Uncle Ed's and get an oil change for, you know, 20 or 30 bucks. It's not the same on a motorcycle. You don't have an Uncle Ed's for motorcycles. There's a business idea. Somebody needs to open up a quick chain, quick oil change place for motorcycles. I would support that. <laughs> So just know those things. You know, is the juice worth the squeeze? Know what you're getting into. You know, it can be worth, a lot of these things can be worth the money, but you need to think about what's your history. Do you put enough miles on the vehicle that make it worth those extra charges? What's it cost for those services? And then if you don't use it, you know, here's another thing. If you if you decide later on that you don't want those services, most of the time you can get a refund for them for the amount of time that you haven't used. You're not gonna get the full amount back and it's gonna be like pulling teeth to get them to refund it to you because the dealership's already been paid for those services that they sold you. And they really don't want to pay that back because that money's already been spent on other things by the time you decide you don't want it unless it's like the next day. So know that. It's going to be like pulling teeth and you're going to have to get on them right away and stay on them they're going to drag their feet in refunding it. Hope that don't get me fired. 
wrong. So know that. Know that. You know, is the juice worth the squeeze? Is it worth it? You know, gap insurance, definitely worth it. By the way, if you can't put money down, you probably shouldn't be able to, you shouldn't buy whatever it is you're getting with a loan. If, if you can't afford to put money down, you shouldn't buy it. If you're like thinking you can't put down enough for at least a month's payment, how the hell are you gonna make the next month's payment if you can't put a down payment of a of a payment? And I don't and that's not enough anyway. You need to put bare minimum ten percent down. Realistically, smart smart people put at least like 30% down. Do not buy something if you cannot afford to put money down. Whether it's a car, motorcycle, ATV, boat, side by side. Don't do it. You can't afford it. Anyway, YouTubers, that's, that's what I was thinking about today. Thought I'd pass that along. If you find this information useful, Please hit that like button down below. Uh, subscribe if you're not subscribed. And uh, share with your friends that may need this information. Anyway, it's Everyday BS. I'll see you YouTubers later.